Okay, yogis. Today we're going to do a practice that's going to be very gentle. Could be a great practice after you've done too much gardening or too much of something and you're feeling some things in your low back and, it, and it's not a good feeling. It's affecting your sleep. No, it's affecting your attitude. You might be a little grumpy. So what I'd like you to first, and if you want to pause the video to go and do this, is to get a strap. I'm going to show some options. Of course, you can have a yoga strap that has a loop. I always keep my loop on my yoga strap so that I don't have to fiddle around with it. But if you don't have a yoga strap, I got a couple of other alternatives. This is just a strap from a bag that I don't no longer use, a travel bag, and that can work as well. And it has some options to make it a little bit bigger and you know, with a slidey thing. And then here's one that's real fun. This we use to carry our skates. We lived in a place where there was a lot of skating, cold weather. And this is how we would carry our skates when we would go to the ice rink or to the river to, to um, partake in skating. So think about what you might have in your, in your house uh, in order to have a strap and um, maybe pause this video and go and get something. Okay, so a lot of this practice is going to be on our backs and this is going to allow the back to rest, but it's going to be very detailed um, instruction especially if you are in pain you don't want to go past you want to you want to kind of approach the pain with your breath or the intensity but you don't want to cause more pain so helping yourself down bring your feet and this is particularly for people who are in the middle of pain take your feet hip width apart and help yourself down onto your backs and already you're a lot happier ha ah. So you're on your back. Oh, that feels good already. You just come down into your body. So this is the first pose and we just want to see how much of those areas that have been bothering us in our day or week or moment, this moment, how much of that area can we soften? Keep the sacrum flat on the floor. So that you really know where that is and if you don't know where your sacrum is it's the the bony part just um, below your waistline or above your butt or somewhere in there so you'll know where that is of course you can always google it then you'll know for sure your feet are hip width apart you can have your arms alongside palms open to the ceiling or your elbows out i like scarecrow style and the backs of my hands on the floor because then I know that my chest is going to get open as well. Now I'd like you to pull, first pull your belly button into the backbone. See how that and it naturally elongates my spine. You have to move, inchworm your head maybe a little bit further. Pull that belly button into your spine, into the back body, and then come up onto your tippy toes. So we're going to ignite the core to support the low back and we're not going to do it with sit-ups we are going to do it with just moving our legs so our knees are bent pull the belly in and then bring the legs into your chest and then keeping the sacrum on the floor go back and touch the floor with your tippy toes or if tippy toes is too much then soles of feet but see if you can't keep your belly engaged the whole time. So pull that belly button into the backbone, bring your legs up. You don't have to bring them all the way to your chest. In fact, as long as your sacrum is on the floor, you just have to lift them up a little bit. And then exhale, ha, ah, tippy toes touch. Whoo. And again, so you can do this. I'm showing you, we won't be doing it as many times as possible for you. Perhaps you might want to do it, uh, you know, three or four or ten more times because it feels good when you come back onto the floor. Land your soles of your feet right now. Come, when you come back on the floor, you, you feel the heat and you feel the gush. Core is so important, supporting our low backs and our spine. 
We always have to come back to it, but it doesn't have to be um, things that are going to cause the low back to be angrier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. We're going to take the left knee into our chest, flex the left foot, and bring the ankle onto the left ankle and foot on the outside of the right thigh. We're going to just take a moment there. I'd like you to flex your left foot, feel your right big toe. Your arms can be scarecrow style here as well. Now, can you get your pelvis so that it is even on the floor? Mm -hmm. So be aware if you've already rolled to one side because it's easier. Bring the belly button into the backbone. Get up on the right tippy toes. And it's up to you how far you go. You're going to bring your legs towards your chest. And this is a lot of work. We want to keep the sacrum really uh, with a lot of integrity, with a lot of mindfulness. We want to keep that even and then come back down and then drop the sole of your foot and then just feel a little bit of a gush. Let's do that again. Go as slow as you can. So even if it's a little shaky, we're just building some more strength in the front of our bodies and this will support our low back. Come up onto your tippy toes of the right foot, flex your left foot, spread the left toes, pull the belly button into the backbone and slowly, slowly, slowly find your range of motion. Maybe on this second one, your legs are coming a little closer, even with the sacrum planted on the floor. And then go slower than you want as you land the right toe. You anticipate it. And then you bring the sole of your right foot on the floor. Nice. Oh. Let's do that one more time. But we're going to relax a little bit so that it's going to be, you know, we're going to be able to use all those muscles that we've woken up. First of all, breathe into your chest so you feel your chest puffing out and then pull the belly button into the backbone and then bring, exhale, bring your legs into your chest even more. Now spread both sets of toes. That should feel good. You should feel a nice stretch on the outside of your left hip. You should feel your abs helping you, toes illuminated stretched out, and then right foot on the floor, oh, and then release, just release the, not release your leg, but just release the tension that might have been building up. Take your left hand on the outside of your left knee and the right hand on the outside of your right foot. Bring your left knee into your chest, hug it, rotate your left foot. Your right knee is still bent. Rotate your left foot in one direction and then the other. That's great. And then bring your left foot on the floor, hip width apart to match the right foot. And then I want you to really, really soften the front of your body so you can feel your left femur slide into your left hip socket. Nice. Just notice the differences. Scarecrow arms, if that works for you. Bring your right knee into your chest. Flex your right foot. Cross the ankle and the foot on the outside of your left thigh. Now notice differences. How interesting. One side stronger, more flexible. The other side less. Or maybe it's all mixed up. Or maybe you don't even feel the differences. Lucky you. Spread your right toes. Inhale into your chest so your whole chest opens up in your side ribs with air. Exhale, left tippy toes, bring the legs closer in. Remember your sacrum, pull your belly button in, just feeling it. And then slower than you want, you bring your left toes on the floor and the left sole of your left, the sole of your left foot on the floor. Keep your right toes flexed and illuminated. Inhale into your chest and then exhale, pull the belly button into the backbone, bring the legs, see if you can't bring them a little closer to your chest, but still with the sacrum on the floor, 
Just waking up that right hip. Now go slow, so slowly. It's like the floor is moving away from your left toes. Come on down, but go slow. Spread your right toes. Spread your left toes. Land your left foot on the floor. Ah. Let's take a moment. And then inhale into your chest again. Exhale, pull belly button into backbone. Spread your right toes. Now go for the full range of motion that's available on this third one. And of course, if you were home alone doing this, you could hold this pose for as long as you'd like, as long as it was giving you benefit, that you felt that there was movement. And you can also, of course, repeat by inhaling and exhaling. So slower than you want, pull that belly button into the backbone, left toes on the floor, left sole of foot on the floor. Ah, soften everything. Hmm. I love that gush after the effort of doing any of the yogas, any of the poses. Take your right hand on the outside of your right knee and take your left hand on the outside of that right foot and then swing that leg around and bring your knee into your chest, right knee into your chest. Rotate the foot in one direction, rotate it in the other direction. Land your right foot on the floor, hip width apart beside its friend, the left foot, and then ooh, just feel the femur slide into the right hip socket. Bring your knees into your chest, roll over to the left. Use your fingertips and push yourself up to seated. Of course, if any of these transitions cause you to be to be have a little bit more pain than you'd like then of course modify I'd like you to take your your yoga strap or whatever kind of strap you've got we're going to come back down but i just wanted you to come up so that you could get your strap bring your feet hip width apart we're going to activate the core again so i'm just going to put the strap right beside inhale arms coming up tuck tail again now, you could lift your toes so you really feel how your legs are working. You could bring your feet a little closer, so whatever works for you. Activate this core. Pull everything into the center. Pretend you have a ball between your knees and a ball between your hands. Come all the way down. Mmm. Mm-hmm. And then, scarecrow arms. Whoo! Grab your strap. You're gonna, we're going to do hamstrings with the sacrum stable and our back stable. So no rounding of the back, no rounding of the lobe of the buttock going up and trying to do something with the hamstring. You're going to take your strap and you're going to bring it a lot around the ball of your right foot. I like the ball myself because my instep is sensitive enough. I don't need more sensitivity there. Spread your toes though. Have the strap in a place where your toes can be separated as best you can. Now you can take your right arm. You can have your left arm out in scarecrow style. This is all about finding some space in that right hamstring, the right calf muscle, the whole back of the right leg. So your arm, your right arm is just a nice heavy weight. We're going to be here for a while. I would really love it if you could um, have that right leg straight. The bent left knee still stabilizing and you're experimenting. If it's too much on the back of your knee, we want the hamstring and the calf muscle to be involved here, then micro micro bend your right knee and then just let your heavy arm and gravity find the space in your hamstring and maybe it keeps coming down make sure you don't have your foot smash your face you don't want that you could angle out your right foot a little bit so that 
the toes are aiming to the outside of your right shoulder. Oh, feels so good, doesn't it? I feel like I can hear the groaning through the interwebs. Ooh. Try not to press the back of your head into the floor. I know this is intense, but as you hold this, you'll notice there's more and more interesting openings in the back body. Pull your belly button into the backbone. For those of you who have more movement, or you know you have more movement, of course, what you could do to make this more intense is to extend your left leg straight. Oh, that is terrific. Now I'm really getting some sen good sensations. Try to breathe, smile. You could use two hands as well, but I just like to have the left shoulder on the ground so that I don't roll up. Remember to reactivate the belly button to the backbone. And this is another pose that has no time limit. Uh, patience, I guess, would be the thing that would time it out. But if you have a favorite piece of music and you know it's three, four, five minutes and you can distract yourself by listening to that piece of music, then that's the way to time each side. Breathing. Breathe into your chest. Hold the breath. You should feel that right in your hamstring even. And when you exhale, ah, soften your face and let that leg go a little bit further. Ah, nice. Extend the right leg all the way up to the ceiling so that they're 90 degree legs. Let, let the strap go best you can. If you need, still need the strap, that's okay. I'd like you to bring your right arm out into scarecrow style. Dig your left heel in. Now press the ball of your foot to the ceiling and we're going to use our core to help arc the right leg to the floor with eyes closed so we can feel every single part of this transition as we extend, extend. Now pull that belly in. Of course, if this is not possible for you, you bend your right knee or you use your strap to help. Activate your core. Let your core be the supportive part of your spine and your low back. Bring that right leg down. Oh, almost down so slowly. And it will feel like we move the floor below the level that you thought. And that just tells you how much space you've created in your back body. When you finally get that right leg down, ha, ah, smile and just release. Feel the circulation through the whole right side of your body. These moments where we're resting and noticing are the most important parts of this yin practice today. Bend your right knee, right foot behind your right buttock. Take your time, take your strap. We've got to get set for the other side. Bend your left knee, bring it into your chest. Bring that strap around the ball of your foot, but in a place where you can spread your toes, use your left arm, heavy weight, right arm out to the side, scarecrow style, lift, Reposition your head and let gravity do all the work. Notice differences. How fascinating. We never come to the mat even at all, ever. So now we're seeing maybe this is your super duper flexible side. Maybe this is your fantastically strong side. Just try not to be too judgy of your left hamstring. Yeah, breathe. Low back, still planted on the floor. Belly button into the backbone. Really just trying to find some more space for the back body here. 
but without strain, just using gravity. Ah. If you need to move your right foot so it's more supportive, so that you can pull your belly button into the backbone, you don't have to do very much here other than to have your left arm as a heavy weight. You can reposition your left hand if your, the back of your left arm ends up on the floor and nothing else is moving, then create a little bit more weight for that left hamstring. Again, if it's too tense or too much sensation behind your left knee, then micro bend your left knee. Try to see as best you can, not a deep bend, but best you can that you can feel this in the whole back of your left leg, particularly hamstrings. Maybe you're a person who's feeling it really in your calf muscle today. You did a lot of, I don't know, stair walking. Yeah. Keep breathing. Inhale and up into your chest. You'll notice the response right into your hips and exhale. Whoa. And you can angle out that left leg if you feel that the toes are going to hit you in the face. Angle out the left leg a little bit so the toes are going to be pointing to the floor just above your left shoulder. Those of you who are a little more flexy, oh, you know what I'm going to say. It's going to be good. Extend your right leg. Oh. Keep going. Ah. Let gravity do all the work. Look at all the space just in holding this for probably just a minute, we have like so much movement. Even if for your body it's a millimeter, that's a millimeter you never had before you did this. So keep breathing. Those of you who have uh, those nasty night cramps, this is a, another beautiful way of dealing with night cramps by stretching before you go to bed stretching the stuff out, stretching your day out. <sighs> Inhaling right up into your chest. Mm. Hold it. Mm. Exhale. <sighs> Soften. Let that leg come closer and closer. Dig your right heel in. Sacrum is even on the floor. Hmm. Three minutes is a really long time. It's much longer. When we're in, in an intense pose like this, it seems more like 30 minutes. Keep your breath nice and long. See if you can't elongate the inhale and the exhale, and see if you can't practice four-part breathing by having a pause between each of those. So a pause the top of the inhale and a pause at the bottom of the exhale. And this will keep your, your mind focused on what, what to do other than to think of your left hamstring. Nice. Ah, take an exhale, bring your left leg 90 degrees. Now try to keep them as both legs as straight as possible. Reinitiate that uh, awareness into your sacrum by pulling the belly button into the backbone. I like to press my left ball of my foot to the ceiling. It activates both the front and the back of my leg. Arms are out to the side, scarecrow style. Dig your right heel in, close your eyes. As slowly as you can, arc your left leg so that you can feel all the adjustments, all the, you know, what has to happen in order to hold that left leg going so slowly. Ah, remember, belly button to backbone, helping to hold the left leg in, this, in air, adjusting to gravity. Keep elongating the left leg as if somebody's pulling it. Keep digging your right heel in, spreading the left, right toes and the left toes. Keep imagining, keep breathing. Don't hold your breath with this effort. 
The thing to do is to breathe. Then your body and muscles are going to have plenty of oxygen to help you out here. And of course, once again, I've lowered the floor on the left side, but go slowly, go slowly as if somebody's pulling the left leg away. And when you finally get down, maybe you're down already, oh, drop your left heel. I, I can't find the floor still. Oh my goodness. And then, whoo, feel the whole left side respond to gravity. Don't move. We're not in Shavasana, but we're just having a little moment where our body can respond. See if you can't soften, especially the waistline, the hips. Right now, just a reward, a little bit of a reward. Bring your knees into your chest. Just roll around into your low back. Nice, gentle massage. Then roll over to the right. Use your fingertips and push yourself up to seated. Come on up. Just get your, your strap out of the way. And if you have some blocks, this would be good to get the blocks. We're just going to have a little moment where we're relaxing a little bit in a different way because kind of being on our backs is a little sleepy. We don't want to be sleeping through everything. So we're going to take our blocks. We're going to be doing a supported uh, little bridge, but a little bridge with movement. So I want you to have the blocks in case that's something that you need. If you don't need them, then you won't use them. So inhale, bring your arms up, tuck the tail again, curl, curl, curl your back. Again, if your feet start to lift or you feel your legs are not active, bring them closer into your pelvis, towards your pelvis. Come all the way down. Oh, feels so good when you release. Now bring your feet right, um, right close to your butt as possible. Then bring your arms alongside your body and then alongside, not underneath. And then just touch the heels of your feet and then move your feet forward so that they, it's, it's a stretch to be able to touch them. You just can't. You're just, just beyond your fingertips. Now lift your toes so you know where your legs are and we're going to move our bodies up and down in a beautiful movement and bridge so that we can also have a strong back body as well. So we're going to bend our elbows, they're 90 degrees, fingers to the ceiling. We're going to tuck the tail first, pull the belly button into the backbone and we're going to press down and start lifting the hips off the floor. So Lower back is active, belly button to backbone, belly, pubic bone to sternum, active. You're going to lift the low back, the mid back, the upper back. So we're in your expression of bridge. If you need a block at this point and this is the only way you can relax into this pose, then go ahead and set yourself up underneath your sacrum with a block. Otherwise, don't use the block. And now we're going to do the opposite movement. So curling tailbone, we're going to have the upper back come down. You're going to feel pubic bone to sternum. We want to suck everything into the core, into the center body, middle back, pull those feet towards your buttocks, low back, Oh, and the slower and more precise you go, once you get your sacrum on the floor, just release a little bit. The slower you go, the more and the more precise this movement, the more that the whole body will react and keep that spine and low back in a good, in a good place for you. Okay, fingers really wide, dig your elbows in, tuck the tail. Pubic bone to sternum, start peeling the low back off the floor. 
the mid back. For those of you who've been with me for a while, you, you might be feeling that you're getting a little bit warm because this is almost activating all of the muscles. If you're working hard, all of the muscles in your body, you know, sequentially. And so get to your highest bridge. Your chest is trying to cover your chins. Lift your toes, inhale, exhale, upper back, tuck tail, upper back hits the floor. Keep pulling those feet towards the head, middle back, go slow. See if you can't feel each vertebrae. Pull belly button into backbone, pubic bone to sternum. Feel, 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 feel. Oh, all the way down. Ah. Put one hand on your tummy and then bring the other hand on your heart and whew, just comfort yourself. Good work. Breathing. Mm. Roll over to the left or to the right with your knees bent. Use your fingertips. Push yourself up. We're going to try cow head in two ways today. So cow head traditionally is when you're seated. You can take your blocks for this one if you'd like. You're going to land knee over knee, lined up. I'm going to show for those who are flexible. Lined up knee over knee, flexed feet, belly button, knee, belly button, nose. Now, for some of you, in order to relax into this, you're going to have to build up the space between your body. I'm just sticking all these blocks in here um, in order to relax. Some of you will need to extend the left leg and maybe support the left hamstring. This right knee is on top. That's why we're doing that. It's always good to have your props nearby so that you can do what you need to do. So I like to press down into these activated feet and actually the, the easiest thing to release those hips is to come forward. Hmm. Kind of just shake your booty a little bit and then land back in and you'll feel a difference, a difference in where that right leg bone is and where the left leg bone is. Flex your feet. Inhale, open up your chest. Oh, this is going to feel so good. Exhale. Cast your heart and your eyes forward. Ah, and breathe. And again, for those of you who find this very intense or it creates tension in your neck, you can use your blocks as a support for your head. But once again, if you don't need them, don't use them because there's so many more feelings. But you do what you feel is good for you today in your practice. Of course, where should we feel this? It's intense in the right buttock. Lengthen through the waistline, push yourself up again, and exhale, come forward. We're going to be holding this. We're going to do two versions of cow head today. Mm. Hmm. Hmm. Now, can you push your hips back so you actually feel that the buttocks are weighty down into the floor? So it's not just moving away from the intensity, but it's trying to find like little bits of it that are different. And of course, a good strategy here while we're holding this is four part breathing. So you bring air all the way up into your chest and even into the top of your shoulders. You can feel your armpits even fill with air. And when you exhale, ah, you soften. And since you're practicing on your own today, if you need to sigh or groan on the next exhale, go ahead, be my guest. Mm. 
come up, we're going to go so slowly. So press down into your hands. Use your strong arms to help you come up. Don't rush. Don't rush, don't rush, don't rush. Oh. And when you come up, you feel the weight of your torso kind of land all the way into your hip sockets. You can feel that. You can feel the ha. Ah. Yeah. Take your time here. Lean back into your fingertips. You're going to do full range of motion. You're going to kick your legs out and up and bend around. Switch the legs so now the left knee is on top of right. And once again, I find it's very useful. Knees, belly button, nose, but to really kind of even like I've got the buttocks off the floor, even come forward as if you're going to, I don't know, do some kind of Cirque du Soleil thing and then sit back. This just changes everything, changes the tension and the initial intensity. It gives you a better chance of getting in deeper into this pose. So inhale. Oh. Exhale, cast your heart and your eyes forward. And remember, you've got your blocks. You can build them up. Breathing. Hmm. See if this, if you can pay attention to the differences. Can you feel all those little tendons starting to find their spaces? Can you see what happens when you use four-part breathing? I really like experimenting with that, pushing the inhale right to the base of the pelvis. It's almost like I'm massaging with my breath some of the places in my hip that can't get into, no masseuse can get into. It can't go from the inside out. But you can with your breath. And every exhale, if this is an intense pose for you or it's really hard to hold, when you exhale, I want you to smile. I want you to fool your body. <laughs> Spread your toes. Let gravity do all the work. Hmm. And of course, you only go to the place where you can feel. So if some of you are feeling way while just sitting, it's not a while just, but you are feeling it and you're up at the top here and that's where your practice is today, then you're doing the good yoga. Because the yoga pose, it's not about the, the shape of it, it's about the feel of it. So we always want to enter not shocking the body to try to get more tense in a place that's already sore. We just want to be gentle around and approach that area and see if we can't create some relaxation around that area, wherever it is that we're feeling. The target here, of course, is the left buttock and it might be your left IT band, might be your left waistline, the first place that you need space. Mm. Take another big inhale, hold it, oh, and exhale, go deeper into the pose. And for those of you who are a little more flexible, bring your arms forward. Mm. Ah, spread those little toes. Use your fingertips. So carefully, bent elbows, walk up. We're going to try cow head in a supine, in a lying down situation. So since we already have these legs organized like that, make sure you don't have your strap or your blocks behind you. All you have to do is just flop onto your back and grab either the sides of your knees. Your head comes on the floor. I know you don't want to have it on the floor, but have it on the floor and grab the sides of your shins or the sides of your feet. Now, 
The common thing that we do is to roll everything up away from the floor. Instead, I want you to find that sacrum again, pull the belly button into the backbone because that's all the joy. And as much as you're pulling your legs with your hands towards your chest, I want you to push them away. Oh my goodness, equal and opposite. So now you're getting both the inside and the outside of that left leg and you're finding all those spaces. <sighs> Breathing. Ah. Woo. And now at this point in this practice, we are going so deep into the problem areas that it's probably one of the more intense situations with your left hip and left buttock that you've had in a long time. Just keep breathing, using your four-part breathing. Keep pulling your belly button into the backbone. We only have a few more poses and they're going to be great. Ah, Release. Undo your legs. Bring them up to the ceiling. I hear you groaning. Whoa. Woo. Bend your right knee. Bring the leg over. Crossing the right leg over. Going into cow head pose. Supine version. Lying down version. Grab the edges of your feet. Your shins. Or you can interlock your fingers and bring them behind that left knee. Whatever you're doing. We're, I, you should be feeling your right buttock. Pull down so much, but now push the legs away. This should be intense. Try not to press the back of your head into the floor. Try to smile during your exhales. Your rest is coming up. We just have a few more poses. It's going to be great. Keep pushing your legs away. Keep pulling them with your hands, both the inside and the outside of your right hip. Oh, four-part breathing. Inhale, hold your breath, push the air right to your pelvic floor. Feel that you can push air into your right hip socket. Exhale, ha. Ah. Feel your rib cage coming in, hold. Mm. Take your out hands off your feet or your legs. Take a big inhale. Don't rush. Exhale. Bring your legs up. I hear you groaning, moaning, sighing, laughing. Spread your toes. Straighten your legs as much as possible. Feel the weight of the legs right into your hip sockets. Bend your knees. Roll over to the right. Oh, use your fingertips, bent elbows. Push yourself up to seated. I hope you're still in the middle of your mat. For this next thing, if, the, if you are in pain in your low back and this is not going to work for you, then, then uh, you need to modify. So what I'm suggesting is if you still, or it's still quite intense for you, you can just bring your leg up and just hang here for a moment and not go into a twist if that's not available to you. If a twist is available to you, then find that range of motion. Go slow. So bring the right leg back. You can use a block and land the foot on top of a block Put it, this is an easy twist today. Bring your foot on the outside of that left leg. And then bring first your chest close in. Oh, you should feel some things here. Uh, close into that right thigh. Now pull the belly button into the backbone. Lengthen through your waistline. Inhale, hug, hug, hug that leg. It's like there's no air or light between your tummy your chest and this right thigh. Inhaling, exhaling, lean over to the right buttock. Bring your arms out, scarecrow style. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, come forward. Take your poor old right leg, 
help it back onto the mat. Take your left leg, pull it back best you can. Remember, if this is too much, you just leave your left foot on the floor and just allow things to have their space. Otherwise, pull it back and then bring your left foot around and then hug. Hug, hug, hug. If you have more movement, then you're going to go for the more movement. But keep your chest and your tummy close into your left thigh so that we're really asking the weight of the torso and the weight of the femur to be really getting into that left hip because we did a lot of work, a lot of work opening it up today. Hmm. Bring your arms up, scarecrow style. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, come forward. Take a moment, help this poor old left leg. Ah, extend, do one, we're gonna do one final little pose before we go into relaxation mode. This is um, just a gentle caterpillar. So we don't wanna shock everything, we just wanna explore what is the space in my back body, in my legs, in my buttocks and hips. No bouncing, no nothing, don't do anything crazy, <laughs> don't do the laundry. Just want the body to feel the space and the tissues. It's like you have like a stretchy bag and you want to just feel that stretchiness. This is the part, my friends, where you get your cozy things, your blankies, your favorite music, or you pick one of our Shavasana videos um, on this channel and pick the time that you'd like or no music. And I hope that you have a fantastic Shavasana. Stay in your Shavasana for as long as you're able to until you feel the perfect time as we feel the tingly feelings in the tips of your fingers and the tips of your toes. It's so much my pleasure that you have decided to join me on the mat and take this time for yourself. Thank you so much. Namaste.